Hey guys, we're going to do a quick tutorial today on how to create a simple um, scrolling background. Um, a lot of you guys have already started your, your planning and you've shown your sketchbook designs. You kind of have ideas of what's going to be in your foreground, your, um, your middle ground and background layers. And so um, a lot of y'all are doing really good at that. So here's an example of one that has been completed kind of see how that how that works right here you have the uh, foreground is longer when you compare it to the middle ground you can see the foreground here middle ground with the trees background is the sky and the stage is basically just colored the sky color um, you can see that the foreground is longer um, than the than the rest of it um, the reason is because to get this effect you want that foreground to be scrolling by quicker, kind of give that real 3D effect. Um, backgrounds can be scrolling by a lot slower, it's further away, um, so that appearance of motion isn't going to be as apparent. Um, and so that's what we're going to we're going to go for today. And you can see that there's repeating elements here. Um, this group of trees has been doubled. Um, the hills in the back or in the middle ground here has been doubled. Uh, foreground has been I believe one, two, three, four times um, copied and added on to the back of of that layer. Um, and we'll go over that really quick. Um, today what's going to be, what you're going to be working on is basically a um, um, a practice version of this. And if you decide you want to use this practice as your actual your actual project or you want to move on further with this and use this as your project then great uh, you can definitely do that but um, what I'm going to ask for you all today is we're going to get a certain um, we're going to go to a, a certain step in this process and I want you to show me that you you understand this process how to create this uh, looping um, repeated background and you're going to render a video for me um, that shows me you know how to do that um, so we're going to create a new project here, and if you've already done this too, you already started a, um, a background, that's great. Um, go ahead and use that one, and, that's, and that can be used as your, um, as your practice as well. And show me your progress in that. Um, action script, width 1920, height 1080. You could do this in your actual uh, walk cycle and just add on different layers. Um, I like to keep the thing separate, that way something should happen to it, crashes, whatever, you don't lose everything. Um, and we can import your walk cycle into this um, at a later step. Um, but all I'm looking for right now is just uh, um, what you can get done with your, with your background. So 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. Keep that the same as your walk cycle, should be the same as this. I'll click OK, I got my new stage popping up. I'm going to fit it in the window. Actually, I'm going to control minus and back out a little bit. All right, so what I want to do, and you can do this a lot of different ways. A lot of people will draw their lines with the pen tool. Um, some will do it with the pencil tool. Just know that when you're using tools like this, um, it's creating a stroke that you can then go in and use your paint bucket tool and fill it. If you're using um, this tool, it is already a fill tool. And so if you go to draw something on your stage with this, you're not going to be able to then go in and fill it. So make sure you're drawing with the right tools. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm working with the mouse today, so it's going to look very rudimentary. So I'm just going to create some little terrain here for my, ooh, for my foreground. Um, and that works. And I'm going to shift and drag down to create that straight line. Straight line there and straight line up and whatever hangs off I can clean up later. I'm going to fill this and already have a, oh look I have a gradient already here. If you make a gradient that's fine you can use your gradient and you can fill it. This is not going to work though. Think about how if that were scrolling by it's going to go dark to light and then all of a sudden dark to light and dark to light. So um, what you can do is use a gradient transform tool. Usually it's it looks like your free transform tool. It's hiding underneath there. You can press F on your keyboard. And when I click on my gradient here, I can now access these controls. I can rotate my gradient 
and I can squeeze my gradient down. I can um, move my gradient up or down however I like. I kind of like the sandy kind of look in this terrain. Um, so I have this. And now what I want to do is um, I'm going to actually create a, a symbol from this shape here. And so I'm going to get into my selection tool, double click everything here, and I'm going to convert to symbol. Uh, I'm just keeping this as a graphic symbol. You can change it to graphic. I'm just putting foreground. I'm going to put four um, and click OK. Now what I want to do is actually um, I'm going to drag another one of these. I'm going to drag this guy and drop it right here. So I just grab my symbol and making sure it's on level with my first one. I'm using the guides here to help me. kind of snaps it into place. So that's right next to it. Uh, what I'm concerned about is how they're lined up though. See how this doesn't match up with this. I got these black outlines. I got to do a little bit of editing here. So I'm going to click into this symbol right here. And I'm going to and see I'm in the foreground symbol. I'm going to click on this. Delete. Notice that it deletes it from this one too. It's, a, it's the same symbol so it's going to make those adjustments. I'm going to click on this one. Delete. I'm going to actually zoom out so you can see this. Um, actually, I need to be a little bit closer here. If I want to um, adjust where these points are meeting here, I want to use my sub selection tool. When I click on my object with the sub selection tool, these anchor points pop up. And I want to adjust these anchor points to match with this. I'm going to adjust this one to match right there. Okay, there's a little bit of gap there, so I'm going to fill that a little bit more. Let me zoom in closer so I can see. Ah. A little bit of overlap. That'll be good. Now I zoom out. Can't tell, but when I adjusted this one, I'll show you right here. Adjust this one and adjust that one. And that's helpful because what's eventually going to happen is your background is going to scroll and you want this front edge to meet this back edge so if you go ahead and do that right here and match it up like that then as it scrolls down you should um, have something that's relatively seamless. Okay, so I'm going to back out here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to add another one of these guys. It's already edited, so it should snap right into place. Slight little gap. Just going to move it a little bit forward. And so I'm creating my repeating background here. There. So, I've got a repeating background. I added so many. I added one, two, three, four, because of what I want to do is be able to scroll this by for 10 seconds. That's what your um, final uh, walk cycle is going to be. So I'm going to go to 10 second mark on my timeline. I'm going to hit F5. So it creates a symbol, or it creates a, opens up those layers for animation. I'm now, it's set right now. I want to go, actually I'm going to set it, frame one. Make sure you click on frame one. And I'm going to drag that so it's on the edge there. Now I'm going to go out to frame 10, or sorry, 10 second frame. And I want to move this straight down and stop it there. Okay? So, oh shoot, that was absolutely pointless because. I made a huge mistake. I'm going to move this back. There we go. Frame 10, or 10 second frame, is what you should do first. I'm going to create a keyframe. Hey, welcome to animation, Mr. Fulton. All right, so I'm going to zoom this forward. So there we go. 
So now, boom, 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 right? I'm going to, in the gray space between these open frames, I'm going to create a classic tween. You need to convert this into a tween. Yes, I do want to do that. So just click OK. And you'll notice that what it did was create a really long tween right there with your symbol. And so now, there's my repeating. If I go to sample it, my repeating and looping foreground scrolling by, right? So that's looking pretty good. I like that. Now, for your middle ground, I would hide this, probably lock it, create a new layer, make it your middle ground, and create a way. And so you can kind of see right here, foreground, middle ground, hide this one. You can see the, there's the character there, um, middle ground and background, not as long as the foreground. So it's going to be, which means it's going to zoom by a little bit quicker. And so your next layers will have, will, can be shorter and shorter um, so that you can set your, your speed accordingly. So there we go. Um, now I want to, with this, this is all I want to see for your practice and your progress. Um, we're going to export, um, export video. No, 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 no know where you're saving it and export it yes I want to replace it and yes so there we go and that's all that's what you're going to um, post in classroom if you decide to move on and keep what you created today and keep working with it for your your final then awesome go ahead and do that um, I just want to save some time for you guys and make sure everyone's on the right step and knows exactly what you what you're supposed to do to create this background so good luck and let me know if you need any help thanks